It's another two women talking. Song and I are here. Tomboy and girly girl. Well, she's girly girl. I'm tomboy. I switched that up. <laughs> All right. Okay. Already self criticism on an episode talking about handling criticism. Now, as usual, this one came up of Song and I's private chats over the week. And uh, it was weird because I, I had a, a, I always have Twitter experiences. I shouldn't say I have a Twitter experience. It's an <laughs> ongoing experience. It's Odysseus, you know, going around <laughs> having adventures. It's serialized. But, uh, you know, it was this person thinking they could check me. And uh, started off, and I, I, this is not, this is how to not persuade 101. Right. It was it was a joke I made about Jordan Peterson being worried about Neuralink, the Elon Musk thing that's like putting chips in people's brains. Do you know what? I totally get that, by the way. I hate that idea. It, yeah, it just wow. And Jordan Peterson, the guy who thought it was a good idea to quit Benzo's cold turkey, actually thought Elon Musk may want to check himself. And that was basically the joke. And this guy, I don't know who he is, never spoke to me before, comes at me, uh, you know, I expected better than you. I'm a shitty person. You're not. Do better, basically. And I said, y you've self-described as a shitty person. Why there's should no I take why should I take life advice from you? It, it, there's there's no having a conversation with you at that well, point. Exactly. Why bother? But I said, why should why should I take life advice from you? And he basically, well, I'm a shitty person, but not in that way or something like that. And I said, jokingly, because I kept saying, you missed the joke. This was a joke. I'm taking the piss out of you because who the fuck are you to tell me how to live my life? Self-described shitty person. And the guy lost it. <laughs> and this is what I don't understand. Why somebody would come at somebody critically and be absolutely incapable of handling criticism themselves. And I see this all the time, people dishing it out, but being unable to take it. And people make all these permission structures, all these excuses about why it's okay to criticize other people, but not be able to take it themselves. But the truth is the, to me, and I don't know how you feel about this song, but to me, if someone can't take it, that's immediate grounds to dismiss them. Pretty much, like I, you know, there, there is, we see a lot of, I'm going to warn you right now, I tried to make notes for this, I wasn't able to because this week got crazy and we ended up recording sooner than we expected. So my, my yeah, thoughts are still a sooner, bit scattered. Sooner and yet later at the same time, I lost power. <laughs> and so today has sort of been, Bleh! Okay, it's it's a week earlier and like three hours later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but people are so critical, and it's it's to an almost absurd degree, and I especially see it in media criticism, <laughs> where it's like, oh, well, this is wrong, this is wrong, and this is wrong, and I'm like okay, but was it still enjoyable? Like, you know, I've, I've talked about the fact I like the Aquaman movie. Mm -hmm. Mostly because shirtless Jason Momoa, <laughs> of course. But like, at the same time, it's also still just one of those types of stories that I really like. It's the rough barbarian becoming a king mm -hmm. and having to mature. And also just that whole scene with the trench is just, visually stunning yeah it, it's <laughs> up there to me with avatar where the movie is just visual visual spectacle mm -hmm. and that that's it's that's its reason for being yeah it's it's very well done also yeah, oh, julie, but... julie andrews as a sea monster was absolutely inspired i forgot about that see that's the thing about aquaman there are part there were scenes in it i thought were absolutely amazing just, yeah the movie as a whole it's not my thing Right. Yeah. And, and so I knew I wasn't going to like it going in. And I learned from the Green Lantern movie that if I go in, pretty sure I'm not going to like it. Try not to get angry. 
Um, it, you know, and, and this is where I read this ridiculous, um, hot take piece. It was Annie bundle or whatever the heck her name is. So, you know, this is what she does, right? She just yeah. drops ridiculous criticism. And for some odd reason, people think it's important. I don't get it, but there's, you know, it is the season for shitty Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. And apparently there's a, there's two remakes of a Christmas Carol. One's on Apple TV starring Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell. And to me, that tells you everything you need to know about what kind of movie it's going to be. It, it means I can skip it. Well, yeah, Ryan Reynolds does ironic deconstructions. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. And so the movie is basically everybody is a horrible person, not just Scrooge. And it, it it it's what they do. It's it's ironic and it's laconic. Oh yeah, that spirited one. Spirited, Which, yeah. It it can't even tell what era it wants to be. Yeah, yeah. And to me, you know, I read the synopsis and thought, this is just so throwaway cheese. How can you think too heavily about it? But the criticism was that we shouldn't be making remaking a Christmas Carol at all because it's the story of a billionaire who develops a con conscience or a very rich man who develops a conscience and Elon Musk exists. Therefore it's bad. And I'm like, how did NBC publish this on its website? Like how? That's all the more reason. Like my thing is we should not be remaking a Christmas Carol because we have the Muppet version. <laughs> we do I not need that. any other version of that movie. That yes. It I the like the original Alistair Sim Christmas Carol. It's my thing. Though I did like Bill Murray Scrooged as well. And Bill, <laughs> although, I mean, Bill Murray is a dirtbag, but still. Um, but it, it, That's so silly because it's like you'd think that that's what makes it all the more timely is because we yeah. have all these rich people who people wish would develop a conscience. Yeah. Like, knock, <laughs> knock, it's possible, hello, we've had this idea for a while. But the fact that it was, we we have this term, and I don't know if I've ever mentioned this to you. I know I've mentioned it on, on other content I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, the the writer's circle that I, I was a part of when I was doing that stuff pre-COVID was, it's a werewolf cookbook review. A werewolf cookbook review is the phenomenon of oh, especially yeah. Goodreads, yeah. where this is a this is a cookbook, but I like werewolves. There's no werewolves in this cookbook. One star. It, it's yeah. just trying to force your morality on the work instead of deciding whether, you know, the the whatever it was did what it did well. And and that's the thing with with Aquaman. There's my biggest complaint with Aquaman is Aquaman and Mara had no chemistry. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's it's the I, Amy <laughs> Adams, Henry Cavill problem. Now, in that case, Amy Adams and Henry Cavill are both competent actors just yes. for what for whatever reason, it did not click in those characters. It, I, it, I'm going to blame Zack Snyder. <laughs> I, I really think I feel bad for Amy Adams because there's rumors about recasting here. Oh, she's already been recast. She, uh, Dua Lipa. She has been recast. OK, I, I, OK. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I feel I do... bad for her because I think maybe if she got better direction, there would have been more there. Cause we've all seen, um, what's his, what's his name? Enchanted. Yeah. Right. We know she can pull it off. I, I do worry that maybe part of the recast might actually be because she gained some weight. Oh, really? Um, and you can, you can see it in, um, in disenchanted well, okay let's face it she also doesn't look anything like canonical lois lane i'm no. not sure what that cat like if you're if you're going to take a part that's known and i say this as a ginger and yes dying ginger hair is really difficult mm -hmm. but i felt the same way about scarlett johansson as black widow if you're going to play the part embody the part right dye your hair wear a wig something yeah. Right. When Scarlett Johansson showing up as Black Widow blonde, I'm like, nope. And one could argue that's just personal taste. To me, that is a question of respect for the character. And I mean, if Henry Cavill can wear that white wig as Geralt of Rivia that whole time, I mean, those those things are not the most comfortable things to wear. No. Maybe that's another reason why he wants to leave. 
he's tired of the wig. No, I, I don't think, I, I don't think I he would think, get tired of that wig. I think he's just, he very quietly knows the material is bad and they've written themselves into corners they can't get out of. And he's being, even, he's being a mensch about it, but he made the right call. I, I don't think he's even being that quiet about it. I think he's just being diplomatic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like <laughs> we we all saw, well, anybody who bothered to watch the the stuff after the, well, even the first season. Uh, and this is the thing. There is a place for criticism. I mean, I get criticized all the time. And I mean, the one, there was one recently, and I just made a brief comment on it with Feedback Friday because I didn't think more need to be said that somebody said, what is it? Substance abuse instead of drug and alcohol addiction. Mm -hmm. And some people might think that's a nitpick, but for me, they pointed out that people can be addicted to things like caffeine Mm -hmm. And that's not or cigarettes. And that's often not considered a drug or alcohol, but it it can be incredibly addictive. I'm like, all right, you know what? It doesn't cost me anything to make that change. And fair point. I'll probably slip up a few times, but I'll try. Right. Mm -hmm. That's fair. And the person was really nice about it. But I mean, that was a critique. Right. The other one was I laughed because within an hour of each other, I got checked both ways on the uh, person with autism, autistic person. I saw and, that. Like then, that. It's a huge divide yeah. it, it, among uh, with language. And you do have to code switch. Right. When you're in meetings with government, you have to say person with autism because this person centered language. But I know a lot of people who are on the spectrum prefer autistic person i try to use neurodivergent that way but one guy completely flipped out on me once because of that insisting it was bigoted so sometimes there's no winning i i say this very gently i feel like part of the issue is i understand something like autism is very big in someone's life but i also think part of the problem is people make it so much a part of their identity okay but they're being autistic about being autistic I kind of got to give them that one <laughs> true <laughs> like that's, that's the thing like they it's it's one of the I get I could fight this but it, it the is point? <laughs> well it like I said it's being autistic about being autistic sometimes you have to just accept people for who they are and love them that way and you know what at least they're being consistent and, and it's just that that is I would rather someone say something about that than just sit there irritated. Yes. So, you know, I don't it's, you know, it's funny because it's just, OK, I'm going to go this way. OK, I'm going to go that way. I can't win, but I'm not going to get upset about it. Right. It, yeah. There are other things that just. I think that need to be talked about that there is constructive criticism. There is criticism that is not constructive because it comes from people who want you to fail, but it is still valid. And then there is stuff that is, that actually needs to be talked about because it's not criticism. It's just abuse. Right. Yeah. And it's so hard to tell what's what in one of those. I'm sure I'll take shit for this, but I am not a fan of the words are violence paradigm violence is violence yeah no you you have to have a differentiation yeah and I, I do think that hurt feelings can sometimes be worse than than physical violence because physical violence you know it's wrong but when yeah. somebody's gaslighting you but but let's you know let's call emotional abuse what it is let's not minimize the damage it can do and and let's just not conflate mean words with stuff that can cause physical harm because they are different things and and it does make it very difficult to talk about the different types of criticism the role and how useful listening to different types of it are Mm -hmm. i mean the, the one that the one I think could really use a grown up right now i don't know if you've been following the will smith rehabilitation attempt kind of it they're butchering it and i i'm actually starting to feel bad for the guy 
because I'm at the give me a reason stage, right? Because I, I do see the criticisms of the criticism. Well, God, we're getting into criticism of criticism, what, right? You know, he, he did an apology video a, a few months ago. Yeah, that wasn't good. No, and people were saying it, it's a YouTube apology. Yeah. Almost by the number. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like, don't don't be in your ironically one of my one of the moments that I was kind of like okay I don't really like Will Smith so much anymore was at the beginning of the pandemic and he was talking about oh how hard it is to be stuck at home and someone posted a a helicopter drone shot yeah of his His property yeah and it's like there are multiple swimming pools yeah and there's tennis courts and it's like shut up that's almost as bad as the Imagine video. Yeah, I I had <laughs> to check myself during COVID sometimes because I've got, okay, I don't live like Will Smith, but I live in the woods. Yeah. And so, you know, I had a marsh. I had a walking trail. But my backyard is where I shoot all that Prince of Sparkle Pony thing. It's, it's a park, right? Yeah. So for me, COVID lockdown was a very different thing than somebody who lives in the city. Cause I mean, I have an office with a door that closes and you know, there's, there, you walk, there's ducks outside and there's the occasional <laughs> deer and there's a fox and you know, the neighbor has chickens down the road. Like this is a very different thing. And so I tried to be both like kind of shut your mouth about the whole thing, mm-hmm. but also I tried to be more compassionate as it went along for people who were stuck in a condo and were sort of losing it which is actually where I was yeah (laughs) it's it it's a very different thing I know some people who have who are having you know anxiety symptoms to this day and it started in COVID lockdown in a downtown condo yeah um but my point talking about Will Smith in the house is you know they they filmed the apology video in his house and it's like you could just tell they brought in a filming crew yeah it it wasn't like jeffree star on the gold couch right which like jeffree star doesn't apologize for anything (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, that's a which which uh, yeah i don't think that's good either no that's a whole different genre yeah really. i mean the fact <laughs> that it was so slick means every word matters because there was probably a prompter exactly yeah and it it's so it, it's hard to take something like that sincerely yeah and it, with with will smith it's like just to quote wicked just say you're sorry healthy just say you're sorry you exactly. can still be with the wizard yeah but, but you okay. worked and waited for yeah. exactly you all you ever wanted I but want she it. owns it she owns it in the next line i don't want it anymore exactly owns it. it's not i feel bad i have growing to do i'm not a perfect person but but you know you know elfie owns it that's defying gravity yeah will well, smith is pulling popular he's trying he's oh, trying can, can can i just say so it's like i'm I'm not thrilled with like anything i've heard about the wicked movie yeah which is really disappointing because i love that musical so i much. do too yeah but yeah. I, i've so i've been on a taylor swift kick for like the past oh we're, we're going to swifty okay hold on let's wrap up with will smith and then we'll go to taylor swift well it actually we oh, have the it? wicked okay. tie-in but oh, oh yeah. wait Taylor up. Swift's in the wicked movie no 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 let's finish okay. up with Will Smith and then I'll use yeah it as okay because okay because Will Smith I I I accepted the criticism of the criticism that Kevin Spacey is getting work again Mel Gibson slithering back in you know Will Smith he, it was because he did it on camera but the punishment in retrospect seems harsh and so i'm just like please give me a reason to make me feel like you're not just getting away with smacking a guy for words on Mm -hmm. live tv because you know just give me any excuse to let you back in and then every time he talks about it it's all about his feelings there is actual absolutely zero empathy for what chris rock went through in that moment 
if you really want to do something about it, have a red table talk with Will and Chris. Well, and Chris I, I think go. Chris wouldn't do it. I uh, yeah, think. Chris Rock has been an absolute mensch about that whole thing. But as somebody who has been in that situation, it's yeah. terrifying. And I get why he doesn't want to talk about it. He's oh, handling yeah. it right. But I also get why he doesn't want to talk to Will Smith. And, yeah. you know, I'm not at all saying Chris Rock should do it. I'm yeah. just like, if they actually but that, wanted that, to center it properly, that's yeah. what they would try to do. But what they'd have to do is let Chris Rock tell Will Smith how it affected him and have Will Smith seem to care about somebody other than himself. That's how restorative justice works. And so, like, to me, whoever is doing either Will Smith's not listening to his crisis management team or they're bad at what they do because this idea that anybody should care about Will Smith's feelings when he just couldn't, it was a dumb joke, but it wasn't what it was made into. And here's the thing. So it's like, my mom loves the um, GI Jane movie. Okay. So like I heard it and I laughed a little and I was also like, you know, if anyone could actually pull off a GI Jane. Too, oh, if it's you, Jada. Yeah, if you saw that episode of The Equalizer, Jada Pinkett Smith was in. Yeah, she could she could crush a GI Jane sequel. Yeah. It it wasn't it wasn't intended to be mean, and I suspect that he may not have known. He may have thought it was just a fashion choice. Yeah, not alopecia. And, yeah, and I saw people on Twitter, especially who were like, "She's been out here talking about her." But, that doesn't mean we've all seen it. Right, right. People just, just people you don't get the you, memo. Yeah. So it's like that was totally understandable. That's um, that's another criticism. We'll segue into Taylor Swift this way cuz that's another segue uh, 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 a criticism of celebrities that I think is unfair that people treat celebrity comments like they've been watching every breathless take Twitter makes. And that is, right. that is just not the reality. Okay, really quick. I'm going to explain why all roads lead to Taylor Swift with this. Okay, guys. Shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> I, mean, I am going to talk about haters, that. right? I, I am going to talk about that because yeah. that's actually one of my sticking points. Uh, okay, so but like The I Rock said, doing that on Lip Sick Battle was fire. Come on. <laughs> yes. That song is worthy because The Rock lip synced it. <laughs> it's like it's like that Tom, I mean, Tom Holland is the king of Lip Sync Battle, right? Yes. But so, The Rock is a close second. Okay, so the whole reason we're doing this topic is because I've been on a Taylor Swift kick and I have a deep love-hate relationship with Taylor Swift and I have a lot of criticism of her and a criticism of the way she handles criticism. And so Liana has listened to me go off for like the last week, just all these little things that I'm like, long paragraphs. And finally, I said, let's talk about criticism. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I, I think to, to set the table here with Swifty. Yes. I think we all agree she takes a lot of crap. Yes. But she doesn't seem to be getting better at responding to it. And, you know, because I know for me, after a while, you just become numb to it. You don't care. Yeah, she she what had ten of the top forty Billboard songs. You and, don't yeah, yeah yeah you don't need to listen <laughs> to your critics. Oh, okay, when you're so, doing that, right? I, I, I'm gonna hit several points pretty quickly. So really quick, I mentioned the Wicked thing. Yeah. Um, Ariana Grande has been cast as Glinda in Wicked. Oh. Which, uh, that yeah. could okay on the one hand i see it because of that reaction right she's got Gl the voice well glinda is also but she's actually the wrong range for glinda yeah. she's a mezzo but she does she does have quite a high extension so she can However, sing it i was thinking last night do you know who i would actually love to see as glinda who taylor swift Oh yeah, that's what when, when you were like she's in she's in Wicked. I was like, oh, she'd be she'd be a great Glinda. I'm she'd just glad it's one. not Kristen Bell. I'm just glad it's not Kristen Bell. I will just say it right there. Oh my God, she's my Taylor Swift. Yeah, um, 
I I will say that they the actress they've cast as Elphaba though she's like thirty five, and I'm sorry, but you can see it in her face. She was the blue fairy in the Disney's Pinocchio remake. Oh. And I'm like, this is a college story. Like, all the way back to the original book, this is young adults in college trying to find themselves. And I I hate this thing. Whenever I see criticism of fantasy stories, people online will be like, well, it's a fantasy world. Maybe people age differently. Or maybe university works differently. I'm like, that is the stupidest argument. It's just, <laughs> I, I don't buy that they couldn't find somebody else who could sing that it uh alphaba is a tough tough part vocally but mm -hmm. part of it is is endurance on the stage because there, there are a couple of monster songs yeah far apart but that's not the case in a movie no it's not well, tom it, hooper doing this thing is it or tom hopper thankfully no but they're dividing oh, it no but they are expanding it and they're doing um two full movies rather than just one which oh. i think is a terrible idea because i'm I'm sure they're gonna drive down on the politics what are they gonna do the son of the witch thing too no i don't think it's that it's just okay. gonna be the musical um but i'm pretty sure they're gonna go into like because it is a very political story the like, book Alphabet, oh god the book just stopped not, to do political screeds not even the book but like even the show it's like they're making points yeah but they're not shoving them down your throat. And that's something the show did so well. And it's, you know, it's something that it managed to talk about prejudice without actually really talking about mm -hmm, prejudice mm -hmm. in a way that, you know, we well, need... she's a, she's an animal activist. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, we need stories about people. And, and that's what's something that's so great about science fiction and fantasy is it's like, you can use it to address things like prejudice without mm -hmm. outright saying it. Um, the actress you know, they've cast as Alphabet is black. Oh, I'm okay. Kind of, Wait, and I'm, she's the blue fairy? Yeah. Which blue fairy? In the live action Pinocchio. Disney oh, Justice. the live action Pinocchio. I jumped to Once Upon a Time. Okay. No, the bad one. <laughs> Wait, is she the one that's, no. No, that's Glinda on Broadway. No, is it? Uh, she's That's she's not, not a Broadway. Oh, okay, me, okay. Let me see if I can find the name. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're that we're show's big be into wicked. I mean, oh, yeah. I'll I admit I'll watch it. Yeah, I'll watch it because uh, it's Cynthia Erivo. Cynthia Erivo. Let me see what else she's been in. Um. Oh, she was in Harriet a few years ago. I mean, um, I suspect there's a reason. I always give people a chance with this I, stuff. My big thing is I just, I think she's too old. I, I, I'm sorry, like I said. I, I mean, Harrison Ford face. is still playing Indiana Jones, so it's all... Well, yeah, um, older character, whereas Alphabet is supposed to be like 1920, 22 at most, because she wasn't allowed to go to university until her sister went. Right. <laughs> I think, unfortunately, part of the casting is her facial structure, which... I don't know. She doesn't look anything like Adina Menzel. No, but she's got a particular... Yeah, You know, I, I can... Oh, boy. This this could go... Um... And, and see, that's part of why I think they're, they're going to drill down on politics, which I think is the worst thing you could do, because this is a story that addresses politics beautifully. <laughs> And it addresses yeah. the idea of prejudice and, to, to and me, judging a book by its cover. To me, I'm afraid it'll end up in the woman king trap. Yeah. Where people start, start forcing the film to conform to something it never intended to do. And they knew the woman king was going to be controversial. But I, I, I just can't forgive people for confusing inspired by true events and based on a true story people don't understand oh, this is weird there's two alphabas apparently in this movie we're getting we're getting hung up on this movie this is a yeah. very confusing 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 movie yeah. i don't know what's going on here because jessica vosk is also credited as um i think some of the stage performers have wound it up have wound up discredited by the 
Google algorithm. Ah, okay. I know Adina Menzel was on there as that, Elva when I first checked it a few months ago. That yeah, okay, because they've got standbys listed. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so I'm like, this is weird. Okay, so, yeah. but yeah, the the Woman King, I saw it. It was a good movie for what it was. Yes, they they swung wide on on history because it was more like an allegory and it was structured as kind of myth history right yeah. it was its history the way you know yes there was this people called the Dahomey and they used a few names and yes they made their money from the slave trade but people got hung up on that and the minute you make a movie involving anything to do with the slave trade people just get absolutely fixated on nothing good can happen there's also this mentality of it's like everything has to cover no movie and no story or one character is allowed to be just one thing it has to represent an entire experience um and that's impossible i I know we were going to talk about taylor swift but i'm going to talk about turning red for a minute Oh, I, I'm sure. Um, well, okay, we're segging in because it's teen girl stuff again. Yes. So, with turning red, it's obviously there was the controversy of, and the one reviewer who was like, "Well, I don't relate to this because I'm not an Asian girl in Canada in 2020 or 2002." Right. Which I'm like, okay, but that doesn't change the fact. Is it a good movie? Did it <laughs> exactly. Tell the story. Did it tell the story? in a way that you could relate to what she went through. Right. Which is what it's supposed to be. Um, the smaller controversy, more in my circles of the internet, was there's a cartoon reviewer called Mr. Enter. Okay. And I feel bad for him because he gets shit on so much. He, his opinions aren't always great, but it's like, uh, leave him alone a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but his Turning Red review, one thing he mentioned was, why don't they bring up 9-11? It just happened a year before. It was actually 2000. And, no, okay, I guess. Yeah. Well, it was in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And so a lot of people went off on him and they were just like, why would anyone bring that up? And it's like, I didn't even watch his review because I'm like, I like the movie. I don't mm-hmm. want to hear anyone bash it. But <laughs> it's like, it, I, it, I think it, that's, <laughs> I think that's something that people need to realize when they decide to criticize something like when i called tony stark a war criminal i knew that was going to draw some fire i still stand by that and oh, it's, yeah. it's so funny with my my critiques of the marvel films because um first of all i do it in fun like this is silly let's have fun with it part of the thing i enjoy about it is the cycle of them doing the big climactic action sequence at the end of an Avengers movie and then spending the next wave of films cleaning the mess up because it just made no sense, right? (laughs) And the way I stop my brain cells from dying is to have fun with it. But people get really, really upset. And I think because there is a a germ of truth to, yeah, it's not cool to not give three entire armies a chance to surrender before you snap them into dust that's not cool (laughs) right but people got really mad at me and I I was expecting some blowback from that I wasn't expecting the amount I got but I made a really good friend out of that whole thing so I stand by it and then that's (laughs) the thing like I'm not gonna I I worried for some people's sanity how upset they got about it but it was not surprising that people had strong feelings. Yeah. Other things I'm like, okay, people need to step back and start thinking about what this is really about. And I, I do worry that with the, the fervor that some of these things pick up on, people lose perspective and it's not healthy for them. You know, it, it's not good to be so angry at say star wars that it becomes part of your identity like don't like it fine but well i mean and we i've mentioned this before is it's like pretty much anything non-mandalorian star wars it makes me mad and there was a point where just any mention of star wars i would 
my blood pressure would go up and I would start seeing red. So I'm like, you know, what? I don't, this isn't worth it. See, I, I was, get, I was getting that way with, um, modern Star Trek. Yeah. And there were a few other things it was just like, nope, can't. There was this one stupid Netflix series called the Kaminsky method that did that to me. It was just so <laughs> centered in a particular male point of view and all the women in it were just it, it was a what's his name the guy who did big bang theory and um uh what what the hell is it? chuck laurie it was his attempt at premium cable my husband loved it but i was just like i was like no i said you can watch it if it speaks to you all right watch it without me because i was just sitting there seething yeah and it, it, that's why it actually, it took my best friend a little bit to convince me to watch The Mandalorian. Yeah. Because it's like, that was the point when I was just. Oh, so it was pre-Mandalorian that you checked out. It was all mm -hmm. like the prequels and the sequels. and Well, it was after The Last Jedi. Oh, um, okay. So it was that. And I just got so mad. And I was probably watching too much commentary and hate videos on why The Last Jedi was bad. Uh <laughs> But it was yeah. also just personal disappointment of like, I've put so many years of my life into this franchise and I hate what it's become. And so I just stepped back and I stopped caring. And then finally, my best friend got me to watch The Mandalorian. And you but loved even, it. Yeah. But it, even stuff beyond that, it's like Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, cool. My mom just watched Andor. Oh, God. And she loved it. <laughs> really? Okay, yes. good. I, I got to episode six. And I, I couldn't. I'm, I'm going to check it out because personally, I don't mind slow burns too much. Not when it's a romance, but like regular story slow burn. But also it seems like it's the day to day life in Star Wars that I've been wanting to see, especially in the upper I, levels. I There are moments <laughs> like um, who uh, Skarsgård. Um, Scar well, plus Skarsgård is there. Which yeah, is always uh, a I forget which Skarsgård. He's good. Yeah. he's really good at it there's just so much there's this one character she's a an imperial officer the I blonde think. lady the blonde with the too perfect bun okay do you know who else she played no that's yennefer yennefer's really? voice actress oh my mm -hmm. god okay oh the so voice actress okay fine but i just keep staring they it's like they have digitally perfected her bun <laughs> There, there isn't like a single hair out of place. And it's like this tangible detail for me about why I can't deal with Andor. Well, it, you know, I, my mom is watching it and I'm standing in the kitchen and I hear her voice and my, my back just straightens a little. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to watch it with my eyes closed because that'll make it more appealing for me because it <laughs> yeah. just, it's like the heist takes too long and see Andy Circus comes into it and I love him so I'm like I'm gonna have to go back but I'm procrastinating like I'm See, picking that... through Wednesday I'm picking through um I'm finishing Star Girl. I'm procrastinating I'm procrastinating on the Guardians holiday special too because I have to psych myself up for Chris <laughs> Pratt's face <laughs> well um oh gosh what was it I lost my thought and okay to be clear I'm not saying Chris Pratt is ugly I'm no. saying Chris it, Pratt is smug. He, he's also ubiquitous. <laughs> well, it, it yeah, it's not his fault that he keeps getting put in everything. Obviously, he's, he Q scores well in some demographics. So he's like the go-to tofu leading man. But I just, I can't. And it's it's not, you know, it's not personal I, I could bring up, you know, some of his comments he made about church, you know, going to the church he does. It's not that. I just can't take the smug. Yeah. It's, it's like Free Guy. You know that Ryan Reynolds movie? Yeah, I didn't people see were, it. People were surprised. See, Ryan Reynolds is best when he comes in at like 65% Ryan Reynolds. Because that's yeah. like Ryan Reynolds has a persona in movies. And I guess that's what I get. That's what people want to see. But Free Guy was 110% Ryan Reynolds, and it was just too ironic for me. You know, he he owns, I don't know if you guys have it in Canada, but he owns Mint Mobile, which is a cell phone oh, company. Oh, does he? Yeah. I know uh, Aviation Gin is all over the place. I mean, yeah. he's a Canadian boy, so we're like, go Ryan Reynolds, boy made good, Deadpool's yeah. amazing. 
yeah so he he does this mint mobile and it's very budget and like their big yeah. thing is we keep prices low because we keep everything right. cheap we right don't have right. uniforms no storefront whatever and so he does all the commercials now and it's usually him in front of a green screen or doing something that's like it's clearly a joke for cost saving right. measures right it's like oh we're reusing footage from this commercial but we flipped it upside down right or we need i decided to hire a director who will work for candy and approval and this, right. the camera starts panning down no no sweetie daddy's face is up here yeah 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 <laughs> and, and i mean th- that's the thing he does some really creative stuff and so people are gonna be whenever i make these critiques about a certain thing somebody has yeah. done but why are you hating on him i'm not i like other things he's done this is you know friends don't let friends get too into sniffing their own farts okay so this this leads to a point i wanted to bring up on criticism and part of it is just no one no one is going to be universally loved right and popular it's i heard this saying once that 25% of the people you meet will like you mm-hmm. 25 can be per- convinced to like you 25 can be per- convinced not to like you and 25% are just never going to like you yeah and so it's best to get o- move past the people who will never like you, convince the ones you can, and try not to convince the people who can be convinced not to like you. Yeah. And, and I mean, <laughs> sorry, that's... I, hopefully that wasn't too good. No, it made sense. And I mean, the thing is that in order to get any, uh, unfortunately, the only way to get attention nowadays is to piss someone off. And I hate that. Like people think I do that deliberately and I don't. My brain is just a strange place and weird things happen in my life. And the thing that I, the thing that immediately makes me dislike a person, and this isn't because I, it's because of where their mind's at, right? Some things people accuse me of, I'm like, I would never have thought that was someone's motivation in a million years. And it tells me something about you that you did, Right. <laughs> Whenever yeah. someone says I'm doing something for clicks, it's like, no, this this person, I'm never going to like this person because why would anybody do anything for clicks? That is a great way to go insane. And we see it oh, in yeah. the way some, some people behave who are online. And, you know, I've, I've said, it's like, at this point i'm gonna have to cause a controversy because at the same time i don't know how well i would handle that <laughs> so but yeah it's just this people are so hung up on people who don't like them when it's like yeah focus on the people who do and i you know i, I mentioned before we started when you and i were talking um Stephanie Meyer, who wrote Twilight, one thing I will absolutely give her credit for is, you know, she's been asked, what do you think about people who don't like your work? And she's like, you know, it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I get that. And, you know, she's had some controversy because her brother runs her website. And it was I don't know if it was confirmed, but at least it was believed that like he was filtering comments. And so he would only pass the nice ones on to her and would send her the hate and the criticism. And I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah. Why, why would you want to do that? Yep. Why would you read? And it's like, this is something else that we see, especially from like online influencers who go crazy Mm -hmm. and who get really upset and start to break down. It's like, yeah, I've been reading pages and pages of people talking about how much they don't like me. Put yeah. the phone down. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I make a I make a distinction personally. If somebody just doesn't like me, I do not give a shit. Sometimes I'm happy when people are making stuff up. That yes. start and it's not the fact that somebody made something up. 
It's watching. I do not go on Reddit and when people link me to Reddit, I don't know why anybody would link somebody to a trash thread about them. I don't get that because it's like fine, you know, major portions of the gaming Reddit community despise me. Whatever. Good. Have at it. I don't need to see it. I don't want to see it. You're talking bullshit. You're speaking with surety about stuff that's like completely wrong but have at it. But I don't know why anybody would link me to it. Yeah. But I actually, no. it's funny because people, people think they're helping and they link me to it. I'm like, oh, it's a Reddit thing. And I click on it and it's, it's a hate thread about me. And it's like, why would you link me to this? Well, I thought you should know why. Well, because I thought you would know, you should know what they're saying. I'm like, why? I can't do anything about it. It's the right to free speech. They have the right to be wrong. So what? And they get mad at me. And, and they're not the ones giving you money. No. Like, I, I, I'm sorry to reduce it to this, but it, again, it's you find your audience. You find the people who will support you and not even just financially, but who care about you and who like what you have to say. And even if they don't always agree with you, can have intelligent conversation. Anyone who can't have an intelligent conversation is not worth your time. Well, that that's that's one thing I'm actually starting to think I made a mistake, giving mm -hmm. a little too much rope to people who, you know, have certain philosophical ideologies that I don't agree with. But I think, OK, they're people I'll have a conversation because mm -hmm. more and more it's clear that they think it's not that they appreciate me having dialogues with people with different views they think i'm trainable okay mm -hmm. she's 40 percent there she's wrong about everything we don't agree with but you know if she comes into line then she's fine if not we attack her for seeming th this is this is something a group i will not be named because they're crazy she seems reasonable therefore she's more dangerous what no I okay I get I get that one a lot it, it's I can understand the logic okay explain it. it to me because I'm like, okay what? so it's it's okay I'm not saying it's good logic no of course not just to be clear just that yeah of course not I just someone, I have never been able to figure this one out when someone sounds reason because especially if you have I'm just gonna say when you have people who are sheep yeah who don't think about things they're being told and who just take it verbatim well the more reasonable someone sounds no matter what the shit they're saying if you have someone who doesn't know how to think critically they will buy it hook line and sinker there's some things where it's like even those people can't be convinced if you don't sound reasonable and it sounds absolutely ridiculous and so when someone sounds reasonable and when someone makes sense, that person is a bit more of a threat than okay. someone who just goes off half cocked and just okay, goes but a crazy. Threat, a threat to what? That would basically be a threat to certainty, a threat to the ideology. Yes. Shouldn't that be a red flag of maybe I'm coming at this the wrong way? You're expecting people to be reasonable. Yeah, like every, every time I get triggered, <laughs> I get triggered by something. I actually sit with it. Like The Last of Us 2, I actually had to take some time because that game made me physically nauseous. And if I hadn't been streaming that on Twitch, I would have stopped. Yeah. I, and it, I, it was just, it was, it felt abusive. The experience with the game. It wasn't the survival horror experience where... Um, it was being scared in a safe way or being yeah. exposed to gross things in a safe way. Because there's that combination of like beauty and horror in good horror for me. Like Lady Dimitrescu. I was about to say. Right? Like she's, that that whole game for, it, it, it was a bit thin in places, but I thought the 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 designs of the Lords was really good because everything was exactly what it was intended to be. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people didn't like the sea monster guy, but I loved after the beauty of the Lady Dimitrescu level. 
and the utter creepy ah doll thing of of the, I always forget her name because I was just so fucking spun out the whole time. But then I think that's a, where I had to stop watching your playthrough. Yeah. Oh, oh that. God. Oh, that was. Oh, it takes a lot to completely weird me out. That was so good. That level hurt so good with the doll parts. Oh Plus God. I just stopped caring after Lady D. Well, <laughs> yes, they they didn't organize it that way. But there was something so after all that tension built with a guy named Moreau, whose primary attack was barfing on you. You know, I'm just like, this is this is a simple comfort somehow. I never got that with the last of us too there wasn't those human moments that the first game have of you know because ellie lost her spark mm -hmm. and it didn't understand that you need that balance you need the morality play in and horror. and also there's a difference between creating a world that's dark and where bad things happen yeah. as opposed to actually reveling in that like we talked about with the feminist body horror last time when we talked about um house of the dragon yeah well well i mean the last of us two felt very black pill you know very black pill yeah. feminism to me of uh, there's a message here and if you don't accept that message then you're a bad person and mm -hmm. i always get really and i mean i know that other people say and i think you have to prove that assertion First of all, I don't know if anybody terribly cares about that one for me. It was just the 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 shoehorning trying to get you to sympathize with Abby. And the game absolutely does not work unless you allow the game to gaslight you on the decision she made. And he Sorry, go ahead. Um no, finish your thought. Oh, it's not there. like in Dragon Age Origins. There's a a, a midpoint, well, a, a yeah, midpoint choice, kind of late game midpoint choice where you have to side with Alistair, who was my boy. I love Alistair. Um, or Taryn Loghain. And it's a surprisingly difficult choice because Loghain's the slimy bad dude for the first part of the game. But then you find out what his motivations were. And it's like, this guy kind of makes sense. He's an asset to the party. He actually is smarter than Alistair. I can see why people would make this choice even. Uh, and I, I went back and played a second time and it killed me to pick Loghain instead of Alistair, but it was a phenomenal secondary experience. You get to know this dude in a completely different way. It sold mm -hmm. me. It sold me. It didn't force me. It's like, you must like this or you're bad. It actually made me not agree with what he did, but see the human there. Yeah. And I mean, God of War Ragnarok is doing similar things with Freya. I Freya's freaking psycho and don't want to hang out with her, but I get where she's coming from. I I'm just gonna say this. I have such this set image of Freya in my head. And actually, there's this woman on Instagram called the Viking Queen. And like that's yeah. that's my image of Freya is just long blonde hair. See that Wrong, that's Sif. Bones. That's Sif, and they <laughs> nail Sif. Sif like Sif has so much hair, she has to like stack it on her shoulder. It's so good. Okay, the thing about Freya is Freya in the myth rides a sleigh pulled by cats. Yeah, specifically, it's the Norwegian forest cats, which yeah. are also called fairy cats. Yeah, I had one of those. They're Freya's cats. Oh, they're yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, they're sweet. They're kind of like. They're kind of like Maine Coons for those. Yeah, they're they're big. They have this very distinct bone structure in their face. They have these giant. My cat Caesar was a uh, was a Norwegian forest cat. He got and named so Caesar. Much fluff. It, so <laughs> so much fluff, but they are they are big beasties. But they're yeah. so gentle, and yeah, I mean they don't. They have those a mythic version of those cats in it, but. That I didn't like what they did with Freya in the first game, and they've really won me over in the hey, second because I see the choices they made now. I think what they're doing story wise is good from what I've yeah. seen. Um, but it's like, like I said, I have this such a specific version yeah. of Freya in my head, and then I and plus it's like I want her to be the feminine, you know, she's the goddess of love and women, yeah, and, and I all mean, that. The, 
the the take they're doing on this one is because it's Ragnarok, everybody's broken. I guess like, that. Okay. But I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, that's one of those things that you can you can intellectually justify the choice and still not like it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it's like from from the clips I've seen, I'm like, okay, this is really well done. Mm-hmm. I may not like the design, and this may not be my version of Freya, but mm-hmm. what they're doing is cool. Um, so, but getting back to the point I was going to make, um, the other day on Twitter, I shared something from um, a women's magazine. Oh yeah. That thing the, about, yeah. TV, TV, TV magazine. Yeah. 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 yeah and it, it was all about, oh, well, you know, the reason our grandparents were happier in their relationship was because they just stayed with the, pe- with the people they knew in their small town. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my response was, hey, if Evie magazine could ever address some women's issue was with some nuance that would be great um for context evie magazine was the first place that interviewed gina carano after she was canceled oh is that the significance of it Uh uh-huh okay Um, did did you ever see the photo shoot of her in the it it almost looks like a lounge bar and she's got the black dress with the hip high slit yeah okay that's from their magazine Oh, okay, so they lean conservative, I assume. Yes. It explains uh, the, it was a better time narrative. Yes, uh, but they are incredibly shallow. And yeah, like, I, I looked through their offerings after I saw your tweet and I'm like, <sighs> wow, this, okay. It, it's so surface level and it it's like, it, it it's like what people think Cosmo is, but leaning more right. But yeah, I, I just, I mean, of- that comment <laughs> about people in small towns and all that stuff, yeah. it, it, that was an age where the, re- the respectability politics were different. So if some guy was being a real jerk to someone, people felt empowered to go, Hey, leave her alone. Yeah. And, but I went through some of the comments and some of the other retweets just to like, see what people were saying. Right. And someone said, well, this was an area where an era when men lobotomized their wives and they did oh, this and that. Yes, and I'm like, so okay, yeah. did it happen? Yes. Right. However, the way you're saying it makes it sound like this was standard 90% right. of the experience. The problem is you need to stop pushing that idea because it's disingenuous and it's making it harder to have an actual conversation. Well, and, and let's face it, some of the men that did that were because they came back from the world wars totally fucked up. Yeah. And didn't know what was happening to them. Yes. And that, you know, that doesn't excuse it. It's a piece of the story. Right? Yes. It it just, and, and that's the sort of thing where, you know, this is where if we were better as a culture at And I keep using the word critiquing instead of criticism because I do think there's a difference between a critique Mm -hmm. and a criticism. And it it comes from, you know, being in theater and being in entertainment and really appreciating feedback that feels thought out. And, you know, I I really like this part. This part didn't didn't do it for me. Creatives thrive on that, that at least at least the the ones that want to get better. Right. (laughs) And and there's such a lack of that. And and it's because people get so bombarded by the not constructive kind of criticism that I think everybody's just exhausted. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's it's really hard when you can't get I, I know some people, uh, writers I know, have gotten really discouraged because they sent their their story out to a bunch of people and nobody read it. They got mm-hmm. or or it was just, yeah, it's good. No, I, I've had points where it's like, I, I put my whole story out for free because I, you know, I want people to read it mm-hmm. and I struggle sometimes where it's like, okay, but what am I doing wrong that people aren't reading it? Cause I have like three people who read it and I've been doing this for almost, I've been doing this for over two years now. And it's like, am I not good enough? And then I read it back and I'm like, no, I'm good. Nah, it, it, the it, ability, like quality has nothing to do with popularity oh yeah um so but it's it's the sort of thing where and i mean i know i can i can validate for a song that you know i went through 
the early chapters and went, okay, you know, this seems to go on too long. You can say this shorter. I really like this, you know, <laughs> consider this. And, and, you know, she, she seemed to really appreciate it. Yes. And so, you know, I'm just validating that she's not coming at this as some authors do from, and, and this is an issue. And I think we talked about this before we did the show. Some authors can't take any criticism without falling apart and they'll they'll take it but it it hurts them and you can tell mm -hmm. I don't know if you've got anybody you know like that that and I mean some some editors the, the editors comments I've seen on some people have been unnecessarily brutal and yeah. I've actually tried to talk people out of working with that editor again because I thought it was too harsh but authors have this weird relationship with this sort of thing and I think part of it is it's like if you want to get better then there's that desire to improve and it's good okay but that doesn't help me get better right what can I do better what can I do to make this one of the best things you've ever read right and and, and I mean one of the things authors do is they so exhaust themselves in the first draft that they can't let the rewrite process happen yeah and I mean that's tough because I get it I get killing yourself to get it done and then, you know, finding out there's one character that people just really don't like or, you know, the the sometimes the midpoint is so good that the ending just doesn't measure up to the midpoint. And yeah. that really discourages people because that means they have to rewrite not necessarily the entire back half, but maybe <laughs> the last third. Yeah. And that can seem like a big thing and which it, is it, when it, it's really important to have someone who can tell you exactly how to improve it but it, it's yeah oh, well yeah a really instead of just I didn't like this make suggestions yes right like that's another thing about criticism is that it's one thing to say the one I hate is do better or be better it doesn't help anything it, at all. Yeah, it's not telling the person what they did wrong and how they improve. It just comes across as lording something over someone. Even worse when it's accompanied with, it's not my job to educate you on why what you did is wrong. Okay, but the like, thing is, then why are you popping off in the first place, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I, I've actually started... I. I used to stay off because I, I don't necessarily like it when people intervene in online shit for me because of past bad experiences. Mm -hmm. But I've I've learned, you know, from talking to people that that's not normal. A lot of people appreciate it when somebody actually sticks up for them, as long as they do it in a way that's not, you know, throwing gasoline on the fire. Yeah. Right. And. And so I've actually started intervening when I see people picked on on Twitter, basically going, you know, you're setting a standard that is impossible for anyone to meet, including you. And oh, do these people freak out? And it's like you just came at someone and called them a bigot. And the person doing that accusation can't take a slightest check on their own behavior that doesn't make me think they're a concerned citizen. That makes me think they're a bully and they're just using these causes to get off on rage. Which comes back to what you were saying at the beginning. If you can dish it, but you can't take it. Right. You're probably not someone to be listened to. Yeah. And I do think also that when, when you get more in touch with what criticism helps and what criticism just makes you feel shitty and what criticism makes you feel angry, you actually get better at providing it too. And yeah. I like it is important to get better at criticism because I think that you're you're the best as somebody who reviewed games for a long time and did go really hard on certain games. Uh because I just thought some of the things they did were lazy and inexcusable. <laughs> I did get cuz you know, the nice thing is you go and you interview the developers and you see how excited they are. It's very rare that somebody goes out to make a bad game. Yeah. And so it's kind of heartbreaking when they do. Yeah. And I, I do try to be very 
careful when I do give a bad review because I know it's going to sting. And I mean, I got in trouble for it was a it was a thing called um, what the heck? It, it was intended to be you go up and you kind of uh, slice a life satirical monologues about <laughs> the industry. Right. So it was a comedy show. Mm -hmm. And I talked about the fact that I hate that there is a bonus attached to reviews, like a financial bonus. Mm -hmm. You know, it kicks in. It actually kicks in at 8.5, which is why I didn't understand why I got accused of what I got accused of. But, you know, I said that if 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 somebody's game is if, if I'm thinking it's a 7.5, but I know they're going to get a bonus at eight. Well, there's really no objective difference between a 7.5 and an eight. So I'm going to give them the eight. I was accused of fixing review scores in collusion with the video game industry. Was that before or after or during? It was during Gamergate. Oh, and I was I like, can see how that got caught up. in but everything. I was like, are you kidding? Well, people were looking for something, anything. Oh, yeah. And I was like, are you kidding me? That's just but people believed it. Yeah. And I actually felt bad for the people that fell for that crap. And I watched pretty smart people believe it. Yeah. And they were saying, well, you know, I don't agree with what you did. I'm like, what are you talking? I didn't do it. It's a comedy show. Oh, sure. Comedy. It's like the entire video is there. You can go back to the beginning of it and get the context. You hear people laughing. It's clearly not serious. Oh, sure. Just a joke. That's what they always say. And I'm like, the, the, a lie has become the truth. And there is nothing I can do about it. And that's the really tough one. Those are the ones that eat you because to me, that's not criticism. That's actually defamation. Yeah. And I, I do think there's too much of that stuff. Like I really felt for Kevin Smith during the whole Masters of the Universe debacle because he, he is who he is okay i'm gonna say this as a preference because I, like i said i feel bad for him no woman no female showrunner would be able to behave the way kevin smith behaves online and continue to get work this is just fact but he is who he is he's been that way a long time he cries at every superhero movie he sees right he's Where a known he come mom. from he did kind of low budget movies um he did movies like, well, um, Jay and Silent Bob. Oh, and oh, then Clerks okay. and Mall Rats, but he's a huge comic fan. Yeah. So... Like, I know, I remember seeing him on like the special edition of the, when they finally did the 60s Batman DVD release. Yeah. He wrote, a comp he wrote a really good run on Green Arrow. Oh, which nice. is, which is what the, the He Man team read and liked and and wanted him involved and i wasn't big on some of the the creative decisions he made in the front half i get why he did it i didn't like the way it rolled around in it but i didn't think there was any nefarious intent especially that guy like if you know kevin smith at all he he backed away from some pretty high profile projects because he didn't want to make shit and have the whole fan base be mad at him that is just not his motivation. And I draw the line at accusations of intent. Believe something is shit all you want, right? Don't start a conspiracy. Yeah. Well, I do think when that came out, it was a time where everything was just so high pressure. There was no winning. It That was a weird one because there are so many of these things I don't feel are important enough yeah. to cause the 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 shit storm it does and you know I, I say this all the time but star wars i kind of get because star wars is star wars star wars is so mother's milk to yeah. so many people i just as somebody who has a shit ton of he-man toys was a big fan back in the day that stuff was not deep enough to get that upset about a remake no and i say uh, this is somebody who didn't like the 20 um what are the 20, 2002 remake? I think so. Yeah. 
I will say I don't think it helped that it came out after the whole She-Ra remake because the She-Ra remake from Netflix was just it was so frustrating because it it I, it uh, sorry yeah let's words. you know what let's hold that on for next week okay and and talk about it next week because I think we're gonna find a lot of common ground on this one but it's gonna take time we've been going for like we're going like an hour and 20 minutes now yeah so okay let let's wrap and <laughs> we'll talk about that next week we are two women talking some Doug Yerson, check her stuff out twitter patriot pay, uh patron if you like what you hear, sorry coffee right coffee uh if you like what song says please buy her a coffee please kick her a few bucks because youtube ad rates are shite so <laughs> yeah if you like me and check out the Kalias chronicles i really enjoy it and i'm not a romance fan to me Calidus. Calidus, sorry um <laughs> i'm getting everything wrong um no but uh you know i really like it to me it's like the way it starts is aladdin only a girl so <laughs> i know that's probably not the best compliment but <laughs> meets Austin yeah it's it, it it's not brainless and so I think that it's it's a worthwhile read so check that out you can check out my regular content um check out the it's not therapy bubbles so you can have conversations like this stuff with other cool people and we'll talk to you next time next time <laughs> <laughs>